Oh wow, I'm just I'm staring at this. Should I put on more body spray? Coco Loco just does something to me. Hello. We're gonna be doing a little, I was gonna say monthly favorites. This isn't a monthly favorites. This is just the things that I've been loving recently. I feel like the first part of quarantine, I just wasn't really doing any makeup, wasn't wearing any, <laughs> wasn't wearing any clothes for the first few months. No, but I was just kind of like feeling so blah and uninspired. But the last month or two, I've been really, you know, changing up the makeup products that I'm using. I'd ordered some new clothes, so I have some fashion and some beauty favorites here. So let me walk you through some of my most recent favorite items that I think are incredible and you should check out. Okay, so first things first, we gotta, you know, it's summer. We gotta talk about waterproof mascara. Now, if you've been following me for a long time, you know I have very intense thoughts about waterproof mascara in the positive direction. I feel like waterproof mascara gets such a bad rap and people are like, oh, it's so hard to take off. My argument is that you're not using proper makeup removers and you just, aren't properly taking off your makeup because waterproof mascara does come off pretty easily. You guys know I'm a huge fan of a double cleanse, so I like going in with an oil cleanser first, and I find I've never had any issues with it breaking down my eye makeup. It always just kind of dissolves it off and it's very easy to do. Enough talking, this one here is Urban Decay Perversion Waterproof Mascara. Now, I'm just, I'm a huge fan. I've been using this mascara for the past like year and a half-ish, and I'm pretty much fully converted. The only other open mascara that I have in my like everyday makeup is Glossier Lash Lick, which I still really like Glossier Lash Lick. It is water resistant, but not fully waterproof. And it's very, it's very like natural mascara. It doesn't really build up the lashes that much. So if you're having like a super like no makeup makeup day, that's the one I still will go for. But if it's just like my regular makeup, I'm always using this one. Now I'm the type of person, I wear waterproof mascara, whether I'm planning on being submerged in water or not. <laughs> Whether I'm swimming in a pool, this stuff lasts. If I am just doing my day to day, it doesn't smudge. The reason that I think everyone should be on waterproof mascara is because there's no smudging. Like, you know when you have like the mascara on your top lids or like it's getting like raccoon eyes, it's because you're not wearing waterproof mascara. Obviously, if you have any other makeup on, concealer, anything with oils in it, or if you have natural oily skin and the oils from your eyelids hit the mascara, it's gonna start breaking it down and that's why you're getting it all over your eyes. It's not really the mascara's fault. If it's not waterproof, it's going to move. So I'm just a huge fan of this. I'm someone, I also have very short downturn lashes, so I'm looking for something that's kind of like a drying mascara that really holds the curl. So if I curl my eyelashes really good and then put this on, it really just holds them nice and tight and fanned up, and I'm just, I'm a huge fan. And then just another point for this mascara, it's not super valid, but just worth noting that the packaging is awesome. It has like all these little water droplets on it, and I think it just looks really cool. So I just, I appreciate it. It's always like the finishing touch. If it's an amazing product, and it's also just packaged nicely and just feels good to use, it's a win-win. So if you are looking for a good waterproof mascara, Urban Decay Perversion Waterproof though. There's a non-waterproof version, get the waterproof version. Whew, okay, that got me heated. I feel passionate about waterproof mascara. Um, I'm gonna move on to an eyebrow product. I feel like I've been, you know, really finding my groove with my new eyebrow routine. I've been super into very feathered, like fanned out eyebrows, and I really like doing like little hair strokes just in the tails of my eyebrows. And I have found my new holy grail, amazing, incredible, Incredible, beautiful, stunning eyebrow pencil. What's that Lady Gaga meme? Beautiful, incredible, put it in a blender. Is that, is that what she says? I don't know. Real ones will know down below. Um, anyways, this is the Urban Decay Brow Bla- Oh, I didn't even realize. Two Urban Decay products. This is not sponsored. This is just some organic love. But the brow blade is absolutely incredible. So this is a really cool product. So it's actually like a two-in-one. So the shade that I have here is Cool Cookie. I also have Taupe Trap, which is a bit lighter and a bit um, ashier. Although Cool Cookie is very cool as well. I feel like I was just talking about this in a video. Oh, I just did my um, everyday makeup routine, which is basically a whole tutorial on the makeup that I have on right now. And I go into depth of all the products that I'm using, which hint, hint, this one's in it, and kind of my reasoning behind everything. So I think I was talking in that video how I just really don't like warm eyebrows. Like I always go for a cool tone eyebrow pencil. So I really like the shade of this one. I find the shade to be a perfect shade match and that nice cool gray undertone that I like. And then on top of it, this has the waterproof pencil end, which is just kind of like your regular like pencil eyebrow pencil. But the part that I use every single day is actually the ink stain. And this is basically like a super fine line. It's almost like a liquid eyeliner, like felt tip liner, but it has this kind of like, it's not super opaque, like the kind of ink stain that comes out, it's got a bit of like transparency to it, which is why it looks really believable. So I just use that fine little tip marker and I draw on like these tiny little hair strokes just on the tail and they look so believable. It looks like I've got super 
super full eyebrows and I, I naturally do have like bushy eyebrows but the tails aren't very full and something about this pencil it blows my mind I swear you could do a full eyebrow if someone had little to no eyebrows at all you could make it look like they had real natural eyebrows and we're not talking about like it doesn't give you that big sharpie fake drawn on eyebrow effect which is not what I'm going for it is just so dainty and controlled and so incredible and it sounds super scary because it's like an ink stain and it seems like you're using a marker on your eyebrows but trust me it's not so if you're looking for a very natural looking eyebrow pencil and you don't really like to do too much to them this is the way to go I'm telling you it's such a game changer and also I don't know if I mentioned it is waterproof so it's super long wearing so again really good for the summertime or if you're just a generally sweaty human which I sweat quite a bit in the face fun fact about me okay the next thing that I want to talk about here is a lip balm now you guys know I like to consider myself a lip balm connoisseur I go through my phases so this here is the bite agave plus intensive lip lip mask. Now this is actually the new formula that's lanolin free so it's vegan friendly and I am so excited about this lip balm. So this one here actually isn't the clear version. They do just like the clear like no tint lip balm. This one is in the shade Buzzed which is so pretty because I use this now kind of as like my lip gloss even though it's not a lip gloss but it gives you that shiny kind of effect and it has this amazing kind of like pinky tint but there is kind of like a bit of a gold like shimmer throughout so I find it very flattering. It just feels so good and so moisturizing. I'm the type of person I like to slather on and just really marinate in my lip balms. I also have like an emotional connection to the Bite lip masks. Now this was the old formula before they made the vegan one but it was probably like what four years ago now I went on Accutane for my skin which is like a very intense medication that really just dries your skin from the inside out. It sounds absolutely horrible but it was a really great experience and I loved it but I got the most chapped lips of my life like I got like Joker smile lines like it like cracked up the side and it was oh it was so painful they were just chronically so like not good but what really saved me during that time was the bite agave lip mask so I always have a very special place in my heart for it what I will say this formula is thick it feels like it's honey going on your lips and you notice it so if you're you know not the fan of this for everyday wear I would just go for the clear formula and just like marinate in it at nighttime but I love the feeling of it and I think it's so mm, it's so good and I love the tint so I've been using this in the daytime as well so definitely worth checking out if you love a good lip balm if you are kind of like a no lipstick like very low maintenance lip product kind of person this is definitely gonna be your go-to and I just really enjoy it I love bite as a brand and I'm very happy that they made a lanolin free for Formula. These are all very summery inspired products. I find it's always like the dead of summer when it's so hot out and my face is melting off where I'm like, okay, time to re-examine. Let's try some new makeup products because I hate the feeling. Oh, there is nothing worse than the feeling of like a really thick foundation and you're out in the sun and now also like wearing masks all the time. Like it just, it, it feels disgusting. So I really try to go with more of a lightweight product, um, especially on my face. So what I have been doing for like my day to day kind of look, now this isn't what I use when I film, like right now I am wearing a full coverage foundation I'm using the Smashbox one but if I'm like just living my life and I'm not like filming a video I always opt for a super lightweight and light coverage foundation now this here is the nude sticks tinted cover foundation and this is so nice it's kind of like a skincare product and tinted moisturizer mixed with a super light coverage foundation it feels very balmy on the skin but very lightweight and like it's just very interesting the formula is very unique um, I have two different shades here I actually just picked up the nude 3 because I had nude 5 and this one is like me at my tannis and I'm not quite there yet. So I've been actually mixing these two together. It just feels so good on the skin. It looks really good. It's one of those products where it doesn't really look like you're really wearing that much makeup, but it's not as like lightweight and slippy as something like, say like MAC Face and Body, which I used to use all the time in the summer. That one is very like shiny and watery. This still has like enough, enough like not grit to it. That's not the right word, but it doesn't feel like it's sliding around all over the place, which is good. Again, if you are sweaty or in a hot climate, this one I feel like is the move for a light coverage base. Okay, now on the days where I don't want to wear any makeup, I don't want any face makeup on, I'm just trying to like live my life. I put on a bit of sunscreen and then I'm like, oh, I want to do a little bit more, just like a little. So the inspiration actually originally came from, you know, um, Hailey Bieber. She just looks so hygienic. I don't know how to explain it. I think I saw a tweet maybe a few months ago where it goes, Hailey Bieber just is so clean all the time. And 
it's so true. Something about Haley, she doesn't even have to be like done up or have makeup on. She just looks like just very hygienic in like the best way possible. I've been super inspired lately by just like her sleek low buns and like her very just like healthy kind of no makeup-y skin. So when I'm having a day where you know I really wanna just feel like a Bieber, I've just been doing like wet hair out of the shower into a low bun, put a sunscreen on, and then I'll actually pop this product on. This is the Honest Beauty Magic Beauty Balm Stick. Now this is kind of weird. They kind of angle this as one of their skincare products, but it definitely is a makeup product. It's basically like a highlighter stick, but it's not like a very shimmery or glittery like makeup-y highlight stick, if that makes any sense. It very much so just adds kind of like a wet dewiness to your cheek. So I'll just kind of take the product, warm it up in the back of my hand, or sometimes even just go directly on the actual skin. But I just kind of melt it in the skin, pop it on the high points, like on the cheek, brow bone, and actually that's really what I do. Sometimes I'll put it on the inner corner, but just kind of depends on the day. Anyways, this product is so good. It just gives you that like healthy, ooh, did she just, you know, drink eight glasses of water a day? Or did she just leave a hot yoga class? Is she sweating? No, is she just hydrated? Is she like, Oh, this is the weird description. Long story short, it makes your skin look very healthy. And I don't feel like I'm like, ew, wearing makeup on my skin. It just feels really good. It just kind of gives me that extra little like oomph. And I just, I feel like Haley. What can I say? So really love that. This is actually a new brand to me. I haven't really tried much else out from Honest Beauty, but so far, very impressed. Wait, what? It says, give your cuticles that freshly manicured look. Supposed to use this on your cuticles? No way. This is like enough of a makeup product to me that I wouldn't be using this on my cuticles. I don't know why they say that. I feel like the brand might be confused with what this product is. It is definitely like a highlight stick though. Really, really like it. Okay, I have some Lush favorites here and I'm gonna group these all together. There's three items that I physically have here, but there's actually four in spirit. I just don't have one of them here with me right now. And this is Lush Fragrance. I mean, it's no surprise. I've been a huge Lush fan for a while, but I kind of go in and out of phases of like what I'm really loving from the brand, whether it be hair care, skin care, body care. Right now I'm obsessed with Lush Fragrance. It is just giving me absolute life. I can't explain it. Now, if you watch my most recent Lush Shop With Me video, I posted it not too long ago. I'll have it linked up here. I just was like so excited about it. I had ordered a bunch of new fragrances that I had never tried and they came in and I was kind of expecting out of the four fragrances I ordered, maybe like one or two of them to be incredible, but it's always hard ordering fragrance online because you can't actually obviously smell it. So I wasn't expecting them all to be such major successes, but I have been absolutely loving them and just wearing them every single day. So there's actually four of them. The first one here is actually a perfume. So it's a bit more concentrated of a formula. This is the American Cream Perfume. Now, if you've ever tried American Cream from Lush, they have it in some other products like their hair care as well. And it's this very light kind of like sweet vanilla. Also, it's supposed to have like a hint of strawberry, but it's not like a sickly candy strawberry scent. It's very lightweight. To me, the fragrance is like as if you're in this beautiful bakery in France and someone's whipping up this giant batch of fresh whipped cream. You're eating a very like tiny, fancy, expensive, fluffy little like cake dessert thing. That's what this smells like. It's very light, but it's also just like kind of cozy and comforting in a way. I really, really like this fragrance. I've probably been using this one the most because I feel like it's not too, I don't want to say distinctive a fragrance. I feel like it's a bit more gentle in the sense that it's not like, oh, you're wearing wearing that perfume again, you know? So I've been doing this one a ton, but I also have been loving the body sprays, which this is like less of a concentrated formula, but I actually find all of these fragrances to be pretty potent, which I enjoy because the fragrances are so good. This one here is Yuzu and Coco, which is like chocolate, orange, decadence, but also has like the zinginess of the citrus. So it's just like the perfect blend of like an edible, oh, you smell delicious kind of fragrance, which I always say this, I wanna smell like a baked good. I finally got out of the phase of being like a little 13 year old girl. I mean, the 13 year old girl that I was, which was obsessed with just like smelling like sweet, sickly candy, like pink sugar vibes. I finally graduated out of that phase and I feel like I'm experimenting a bit more, but I can't help it. If it smells like a cookie or dessert, like why wouldn't I want to smell like that, you know? So Yuzu and Coco is definitely a big hit. This one here, which is very much so a summer only fragrance is Coco Loco. And this is like a coconutty body spray that just smells like I should be having a pina colada in Punta and I just, I absolutely love it. Now the other fragrance that I have, which actually my mom stole because she was so obsessed with it, is Avocado Co-Wash. And Avocado Co-Wash is, ooh, it's so good. That one I don't know how to explain other than like Pez candy mixed with citrus, mixed with the brightness of a beautiful summery day and more lime Pez candy. Again, another very delicious and incredible smelling fragrance. They're all so, so good. So if you do like the more sweet fragrances and you want something kind of 
new and fresh for summer. Any of these Lush fragrances are definitely worth checking out. I'm obsessed with them and I just, I've been dousing like even my closet with it. Like I want everything to smell like these products. Okay, so I have a few fashion favorites here as well. Now I originally debated, I was like, should I even be ordering clothes online? Like this was a few months ago when quarantine was, you know, a little, we were all a little like, what's gonna happen? And I was like, what if I order clothes online and the trends come and go? But I was like, you know what? I've been wanting these for so long. So I ordered them off of Urban Outfitters and I'm so happy with both of these items. The first thing that I have here is a pair of sunglasses. Now I'll link the exact style name down below. I know that they were like so annoying to get a hold of because they keep on getting sold out. They come in black, which I originally wanted the black ones, but I couldn't get them. And now they have like the tortoise shell kind of like brown ones here, which I actually ended up liking. I feel like this is just like the sunglass of the moment. And when I'm doing my, you know, Haley Bieber moment, I'll like, I'll do like my low slicked pony with the glasses. I just, I'm really into it. But yeah, I've just been wearing these a ton. Mine are actually kind of disgusting right now because I got caught in a rainstorm yesterday with these, but these are just such great sunglasses. I have a very like wide and large face. So I was a little nervous about them actually fitting on my head, but they fit me perfectly and they're super comfortable and they're not that expensive. I think they were under, I think I actually bought them and there was like a sale going on. So I think I paid around like $16 for these. So that is a huge win in my books. Okay, the last thing here that I wanna talk about is this pair of jeans. Now I feel like I'm chronically in my life on the hunt for the perfect pair of denim and I might just have found my most favorite pair so far. Again, these are from Urban Outfitters. It's the BD, BDG, the BDG denim kind of line that they do. And these are the high rise baggy jeans. Now I'm so excited that baggy jeans are back in style. You guys know that I just like live to be comfortable. I've been living in these oversized t-shirts for the past four months. I just don't want to feel restricted in my clothes. I've decided I'm not living a life where I'm like er, all day, just like uncomfortable in my outfit. So I'm glad that the style right now is to be oversized and comfortable and it's just like somehow chic. And again, so grateful the day of skinny jeans are dead and gone. Oh my gosh. I've also just decided like I've got, I've got a big butt and, and skinny jeans just don't, they just don't look good on me. I don't feel comfortable in them. I never have. And I can't believe I just forced myself into exclusively wearing skinny jeans from age 12 to 18. Like I was just, I was doing myself a major disservice. I didn't even like it. It's just skinny jeans was just like the thing. Anyways, goodbye skinny jeans. We're glad you're gone. Um, baggy jeans are it. So these are the light wash ones. There's a couple different washes. I ended up going with the lightest wash. I just love a light blue hair of jeans, but these are them. I mean, they're just like a nice big slouchy. They're slightly like maybe an inch too long on me. So sometimes I'll like roll them up, but then with jeans, they actually look, or with jeans. But then if I'm wearing these jeans with heels, it ends up being the perfect length. So I actually really like them. They ended up fitting me absolutely perfectly. These give you enough room in the butt, which I appreciate because I hate when the waist doesn't fit and then the butt squeezes in or vice versa. It's just such a mess. So the butt has enough room, but the waist still kind of snatches in and looks really flattering. And I, don't, I just think these are the best jeans ever. I'm so obsessed with them. And I feel like they just kind of go with every outfit. Like if you want to wear a little like tiny little crop top and a pair of heels, boom, perfect. If you just want to wear an oversized t-shirt and the jeans and a sneaker, boom perfect jean. Um, anyways, I've been so obsessed with these and I just wanted to spread the word because honestly, there was nothing more in life that brought me misery than jean shopping, especially as a child. Ever since I was young, I've actually had like a, not a phobia of like uncomfortable clothes, but I used to have a serious problem as a small child and I would like scream and have tantrums and just like rip uncomfortable clothes off my body. So maybe it stems from that. I don't know where that came from. But yeah, finding a good pair of jeans that not only feel comfortable, but also look flattering and are actually cute can be such a struggle. So I'm super happy with these ones. I'll link them down below. So any of my fellow jean wearers who struggle with that problem can check them out. But yeah, I'm just so happy with them. I'm glad they're in my life. Okay, well that wraps up today's little video. I hope you enjoyed this favorites. Um, let me know what you guys have been loving lately. Do you have any new makeup products you guys have been liking? Is there anything I should try out? I'm feeling Feeling like experimental these days. I just want to try all the new things and like revamp everything. Anyways, if you did like today's video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. When you like the video, it always helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. So give it a like, do it right now. And make sure you subscribe, follow, comment, do all the things. And I'll see you all really soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.